God calls us by name into the presence of holiness as God's holy people. We answer this call only by the grace of God through the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of God's own son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to week 16 of the Presbyterian Church in Sudbury online worship service. Welcome to all who are near and far. If you are new to our worship or joining from another state or country, if you are able, please enter into our chat space and tell us who you are and where you are from. Our worship chair, Catherine Crow, will respond to your messages in our chat space. Thank you everyone for your presence this morning. Let's take a look at our bulletin this morning to see what we might expect. After our updates and announcements, we will enter into worship beginning with our prayer of confession and then our assurance of pardon, sharing of God's peace, followed by an anthem, scripture reading, our sermon responsive hymn, acknowledgments of our gifts. Then we will go into our joys and concerns, prayers of the people, and all are invited to join us for our very, very special coffee hour this morning. We will begin with an update from our health task force, uh, Elder Christine Clark. Thank you, Desiree, and good morning, everyone. I wanted to, this week, just give you a quick update from um, the Baker administration and give you a couple of highlights that I thought was worth noting. And then, as probably, as you've all heard, there's um, an issue regarding hand sanitizers. So um, at the tail end, I'm gonna brief you on that so to make sure everybody is up and informed on which brands to avoid. So on Friday, which was this past uh, June 26, Charlie specified that they've designated a $5.25 billion aid budget for delivery of local aid to cities and towns. Um, this is to provide security and certainty. As you know, there's been a lot of economic disruption, so that um, measure was just approved and passed, so that's very good news. Also on the home front of COVID-19, test updates. Um, we are continuing to see a downward trend here in Massachusetts. Unlike other areas, it's actually still trending downward for us. And it's held, yeah, public health is you know, very closely monitoring it and it's definitely going in a positive direction. We have administered to date over 1 million tests in Massachusetts. And so we're considered a national leader. So we're being very proactive on that front. So far, we have had a total of 226 new cases, which, and then our seven day average is 1.87. So it's gone down 1.87%. And currently we've gone down 75% in um, hospital cases as well, standing at 905. So we still have active cases out there. So we still urge you to take caution, but we are definitely trending in the right direction. As you know, uh, COVID has also brought a lot of economic disruption and costs to many people in many areas. And they've given of that budget, we've provide, they've provided 275 million of COVID economic package to spur economic growth. So of that 5.25, there's been a large percentage of it directly aided, um, going towards COVID-19. And a lot of that, not a lot of it, but a significant portion of that, they are going to be putting towards low income communities, which is, as you know, been hardest hit. Unfortunately, with this virus, a lot of disparities have come out, as I've mentioned before, and um, they are going to try and look at affordable housing and businesses in those communities that have been most impacted. And those are the lower income minority uh, communities. As, as I mentioned, we are surging in other areas of the state. We are now seeing an increase of upward of 65%, which is very concerning. 
that's about equals about 41,000 new cases across the US. So we urge and caution everyone when you're traveling, especially for July 4th, if you've got any plans to travel, we ask that you be very cautious and maintain your vigilance and make sure that you do your part so that you're number one, you're wearing your face covering anytime you go in indoors. I really urge you to wear face covering anytime you go indoors. If you're celebrating, I, um, I also encourage you to come outside, do those barbecues, eat outside, spend as much time as you can outside and practice that social distancing. And of course, stay home if you're sick or if you know someone else is sick. The um, other states are going up. So what they're doing is trying to rethink strategies for going forward, because evidently right now, uh, some of the states that opened up quicker than others are seeing a surge. So we wanna make sure that we remain vigilant here in Massachusetts and so that we can continue some semblance of normalcy. But as I was saying to um, a couple of, of friends and colleagues, it's, it's a time where we're just, we're gonna to have to coexist. The virus is gonna be with us for some time until we're able to get a vaccine or enable to, we're enabled to get herd, mental, herd immunity. And that um, we don't know when that will be. So I caution everybody to just go outside, enjoy the weather, but use, excuse your common sense and practice social distancing. The um, hand sanitizers, the FDA has just now advised consumers to not use hand sanitizers manufactured by ESK Biochem. That's E-S-K-B-I-O-C-H-E-M. It's a company out of Mexico. They manufacture multiple brands, but they contain a chemical called methanol. And that is highly toxic when absorbed through the skin or inhaled. And I'm gonna give you six brand names and you can quickly Google it. Just Google FDA hand sanitizer, it'll come up, but just wanna make sure you're fully informed. They, uh, one of the brands is called All Clean Hand Sanitizer. Another brand is Esk Biochem, the same name as the company, hand sanitizer. The third, and there's several of these that come under the name of Clean Care No Germ hand sanitizer. And there's one called Lavar, L-A-V-A-R 70, the number 70 gel hand sanitizer. Uh, another one is called The Good, The Good Gel Antibacterial Hand Sanitizer. And the last one is San, Santa Derm Advanced Hand Sanitizer. What we'll do is I've got a few of these labels and I can put the labels. I'm very visual, so I'll put the labels in our next um, eBlast update so you can kind of glance at them. Um, if you have any questions, please give me a call. If you have any of these products on hand, please put them in the trash. Do not put them down the toilet or down the drain because they are toxic. And um, if uh, you have any questions on any of the uh, phase two, part two, or the opening of the church, I also encourage you to reach out to the task force team. We covered that last week, but just want to let you know we're definitely open for comments and opinions, and we welcome your input. And with that, I will pass it back to Desiree. Thank you. Happy July 4th, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. <clears throat> we do have uh, a few announcements. This morning, we are so very excited and so pleased to announce that our new director of music, Andrew Marshall and his family uh, are worshiping with us today. We will have an opportunity to meet them and learn a little bit more about them during our coffee hour time. Also wanted to remind you to uh, please check the eblast. There is just so much good and timely information in there, uh, especially our 21 day racial justice challenge. And that's gonna begin on uh, Monday, July the 6th. And in the eblast, there is all the links that you will need for all 21 days. And there's also a, um, a study guide uh, 
that you may want to print out uh, because we will be using them for the six times during the 21 days when we gather all together uh, to go through the study guide together. So please um, get that information ahead of time and think about maybe someone you might like to invite into the challenge, someone who uh, maybe has a lot of questions or asking, you know, what can we do? Um, how can we learn more about uh, this issue? So think about that and pray about who you might want to invite into this 21 day challenge. Also, I'm hopeful that some of you had an opportunity to look at the uh, Sudbury conversation on uh, race and safety, which aired on Sudbury TV um, Thursday, last Thursday at five o'clock. So hopefully you had a chance to see that. Uh, it's, it was our first attempt and hopefully we'll be able to have an ongoing, an ongoing conversation. Let us uh, settle our hearts and, and really open our minds. Happy are those who sing your praises, God, and proclaim faithfulness to all generations. Let us worship God. Let us begin by confessing our sins to God whose loving kindness endures forever. O oh Lord, you taught us to love you and our neighbor, but we have not lived in right relationship or walked in the light of your love. Forgive us for the wrongs we have done. We know that the wages of sin is death. Yet we trust in your gift of forgiveness, which is freedom and life in Christ. Amen. Let us now silently confess our sins to God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Sisters and brothers, receive the good news. Your sins are forgiven by the mercy of Christ. Be at peace, for you have been freed from sin that you may serve with righteousness to the glory and praise of God. And now having met Christ in this space, let us share his peace May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.
Thank you, choir. Thank you so much. Our sermon text today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Matthew 10, 40 to 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. To appreciate fully our brief three verse gospel lesson, we must know the context. In this chapter, Jesus summons the 12 disciples and gives them healing powers and authority over unclean spirits. He then gives them their marching orders to go into the cities and towns and into the homes of those who will receive you or welcome you. He warns that they will face persecution. He tells them not to fear the person who can kill the body, but rather to fear God who has the power over body and soul. He assures them of God's love and he promises to acknowledge before the Father anyone who acknowledges Jesus before the people. And he warns that he has not come to bring peace, but a sword. Therefore, when Jesus promises rewards to those who welcome or receive a prophet or a righteous person, the context for this is high risk, a spiritual war zone. The prophet and righteous person are taking risk for Christ. And those who help them assume similar risk. In addition to providing food and clothing and shelter and money. Now Jesus is talking about the host, right? The people who will take in the apostles when they come into their towns. So in addition to these hosts, providing food and shelter, clothing and money, they are demonstrating their personal support for Christ and his church. And they are also serving as encouragers of those who stand on the front lines in the war against sin and evil. In this day, we know, we know of many people on the front lines and they also need our encouragement and our support. So the gospel writer establishes a four-way partnership between God, Jesus, disciple, and host. God initiated the partnership by sending Jesus. Jesus then sends the disciples the disciples take the third step by going, right? Because many of us are, are sent, but few of us really go, right? So they take that third step by going. And then lastly, those who welcome the disciples take the final step by providing support, right? So that's a four-way partnership. The Jewish concept of shalia is useful in understanding this text. A shalia is one who is a messenger or emissary. And they perform an act of legal significance for the benefit of the sender. 
right? As opposed to the sender going for themselves. It is a Hebrew term comparable to the Greek word apostle, which means the sent one. So the principle is still practiced today. Government considers an affront to an ambassador as an affront to the entire nation. Jesus says to his apostles, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. So whoever welcomes you in the name of Jesus, in my name, will receive a reward. So let's take a minute to understand these three groups that Jesus mentions in his instruction to the 12. Those who are the prophets, the righteous ones, and the little ones. The prophets were revered as spokespersons for God. So the apostle would be a, of a similar status. And this discourse is addressed to the apostles. In our current context, the term would apply to anyone, any one of us called by God to speak God's message. So the promise is that the person who welcomes a prophet receives a prophet's reward. Then he goes on to share about the righteous ones and says, you who are righteous, who are the righteous ones? The righteous ones are those who obey God, right? Perhaps the term in this context means Jesus's disciples, right? Those who follow Jesus, students of Jesus, or what we might call a good Christian, right? A good Christian. The person who welcomes a righteous person receives a righteous person's reward. And lastly, the third group, he speaks about the least of my followers or in some translations, the little ones. Little ones can have a variety of meanings. It could mean children, it could mean the poor, those who are vulnerable. But then it says in the name of a disciple. So this equates the little one who, were, who was sent in the name of a disciple with ordinary disciples, ordinary disciples. So this interpretation of little ones or the least of these is strengthened when we look at Jesus's discourse on the judgment of the nations in Matthew 25. And this is so timely because we have just become a Matthew 25 congregation. In Matthew 25, Jesus gives blessings to those who provided assistance to those who were hungry and thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, or in prison. Then he explained, most certainly I tell you, in as much as you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. He uses the example of a cup of cold water as the smallest of gifts, a gift that almost any one of us can give. Jesus does not want our lack of affluence to be an excuse for thinking we cannot do much to help the Christian enterprise. When you think about it, a cold cup of water is very precious to a person who is really thirsty. In some instances, it can be a gift of life. This example illustrates that the simple, most basic and most precious of resources are often taken for granted. While we would prefer in the game of life to be the quarterback, the hero 
the hero, Jesus's heart leans toward the water boy or the water girl. Providing a cup of water is a valid vocation. When we hear about the little ones, it reminds me of the essential workers during this pandemic, the healthcare professionals, the first responders, the custodial staff, the childcare workers, the delivery people, factory and farm workers, restaurant staff, grocery clerks, supermarket workers. I have really come to appreciate those people on the front lines more than I have ever before. I appreciate that when I go to the market, that the person that greets me is wearing a mask and escorts me into the market and assures me that the cart that I'm about to touch has already been wiped down. Prior to the pandemic, many of us would be in and out of the store without even noticing, without even noticing those who stack the shelves, without even bothering to make eye contact with those at the deli counter. we wouldn't even be courteous to the cashiers. Hello, thank you, have a nice day. These phrases can go a very long way. Calling someone by their name goes a very long way. God rewards even what we might view as the smallest contribution. Now, Jesus does not specify the nature of the reward for those who help the little ones or the least of these, but only assures us of its certainty. When those who were deemed essential workers by the government went out to work in the pandemic without sufficient protective equipment. Many of them were not aware of the other type of hazards they would encounter. One grocery worker stated, last week, I think there were only three days where I did not wake up crying because I just couldn't do this anymore. I'm exhausted, says Christine Smith, cashier and union shop steward at a Ralph supermarket in California, which is part of the Kroger chain. She says, and people are yelling at us, cussing at us because we won't do returns, because we're asking them to wear a mask, because we're telling them they can't use their reusable bags. Some incidents have turned violent and even deadly. At a McDonald's in Oklahoma, some of the workers there were shot at. At a family dollar in Michigan, a security guard was killed. As human beings, we need food and we need water to survive. I wonder, is our perception of the least of these changing? It could be that for some of us, this might be the first time we have even truly seen or appreciated people who provide a service that is essential to our survival. And these essential ones were sent out to ensure that the country could continue to have, to have access to food and uh, other necessary items. They performed a needed task on behalf of the sender. Have we been hospitable? Have we shown support for our essential workers? Are they even on our radar? 
During this pandemic, it appears that the essential workers have become our salvation. They are the bringers of healing, the carriers of food and medicine, the willing volunteers at food banks and soup kitchens. They were sent out and they went out, even though they feared catching the virus. So how do we support our essential workers? Right? In addition to being kind and courteous, how do we support them? Well, I think they need us. They need us to call or to write their employers and strongly encourage them to provide health benefits and paid time off and hazard pay. They need health benefits. What if they get the virus and they don't have health benefits? They need paid time off, right? So they, they, they can be at home, they can quarantine. They need hazard pay because every day they put their lives in danger. Those are some of the ways that we can support these essential disciples. Jesus is not praising this sort of general hospitality, but he's praising hospitality to disciples, to the ones who are going out, because there are costs associated for those who support prophets and righteous persons and little ones. One of the costs might be financial. Sometimes we have to come out of our pockets to support those on the front lines. Another cost is personal. Sometimes we have to be willing to be inconvenienced. Sometimes we just have to wear that mask. Sometimes we have to stand in long lines and be patient. It could mean that we have to stay inside for months at a time. Another cost could be danger, danger to oneself and one's family. Sometimes when we come out in support of others, it places us in very vulnerable situations. It can create tension and disagreement right in our families. So there is a cost to supporting disciples, financial, personal, maybe even danger. That is the cost. Those of us here who are engaged in the Lord's work are assured that those who help us are promised a reward. This is true, whether the Lord's servants receiving support are clergy or layperson, preacher or janitor, all are providing essential ministry service. And after you've considered the cost of your discipleship, how will you then support and encourage the essential workers? those who are sent out, the ambassadors for Christ, the least of these. How has your perception changed of what and who is essential in this life? This week, I'm gonna ask you to, to ponder on this text and to take some time to reflect on these two questions. What possessions are essential in your life? What possessions are essential in your life? And secondly, who, what person or persons are essential in your life? Be thankful. Be thankful for your possessions, for all that you are blessed with and encourage and support the essential people in your life. Amen. Amen.
Our hymn of response is number 307, God of grace and God of glory. you were singing as loudly as I was. I'm sure I disturbed my neighbors, but I don't care. As we move to acknowledge the gifts of our time, talent, and treasure, this week I would like to lift up the Sandwich, the sandwich Brigade, PCIS. And this group has been providing sandwiches, drinks, and snacks to the Outdoor Church in Cambridge, Mass. That's led by Stephen Bingaman, our intern at the church. And this is just so amazing. This fits so much with our sermon today because the group that they are feeding live on the margins of society, the least of these. The Outdoor Church Sandwich Brigade consists of four teams, including Jane Dossett, Diana Frazier, Sally Miller, Sandia Gardner, Aileen Gardner, Leslie Molesky, Linda Smith, Debbie Johnson, and Nadine Worth. Now these ladies make sandwiches in their homes each week and then Stephen comes by the church and picks them up on Sunday morning on his way to Cambridge. These disciples are supporting and encouraging the work of Stephen, in this case, who is the, the prophet, the one being sent out, the apostle, and they will be rewarded for their support 
and encouragement. So thank you, thank you, Sandwich Brigade. Thank you ladies for what I understand are the, the, the best sandwiches in the whole world that you are making uh, week after week and providing to this very precious community. Jesus said, truly I tell you, those who offer a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple will not lose their reward. Beloved, let us offer to God the gifts of our lives and labor in support of the prophets, the righteous ones, and the least of these. Let us sing our doxology together. Let us pray. Faithful God, we give you thanks that you have entrusted us with the gift of hospitality and generosity, and that you have set us free to be generous givers of the gifts you so freely give to us. May our offerings this day draw us closer to you as we share them with others for righteousness sake. Amen. Amen. Let us now receive our charge and benediction. Let us be intentional. Intentional in our support and encouragement to God's essential workers. And now may the Lord bless you and guide you and make you bold to live a life of trust and deep joy. Now go in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.